Welcome, episode three of the official Arbroath FC podcast. The usual suspects are here. That's myself, JB. Jamie. And, of course, Fermer. How are you doing, guys? Hello, oh, lads. Fermer's living the dream. Living the dream. I have the day you're looking a bit sleepy. Were you back late last night? Aye. Back at 12, half 12 or so. Obviously, with us today, we have got none other than Derry Koff. Derry, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, good Welcome, to Derry. Good to see you, yeah, pal. Glad to be on. We will uh, we'll find out more about you as the as, as the next hour or so unfolds. But uh, as we always do at the, the start of these things, I sort of view the the game since the last time. So last game would have been Queens Park. Queens Park two one. Uh, Simon Murray came back, uh, and to be fair, Simon ran his ragged. I think to came be fair, to us, he? He was a wee bit a wee bit concerned about it when he before he came here because they had been playing well and they had Simon. Now what we can say. 2-1 was a lot of folks thought that the score would be on the predictor league but went the wrong way, way. Uh, really not a lot much more we can say it's no it's secret we've no been at our best our season since the, the warm ups but uh, we just have to keep plugging away there uh, but one thing that did make me happy was Kieran Shanks uh, I think he needs to get a wee bit of more game time I think I think he did very well and he scored, albeit, I think, he's found behind the goal, mate. Uh, no, I don't know if it was off his knee, his thigh, or his lug. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all that unless, matters. It'll be good for his confidence. Unless he was hugging his lug with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, the, the, the main thing about what I thought about Kieran, he was in that position yeah. to get it. And he might have should, he should maybe have scored before that. But it doesn't matter. He's in that places, and if you're in that position as often as can be, your your luck's going to come, and you're going to score. I, I love the fact that he's in those positions. Aye. And to be fair to him, I know he scored bucket loads previously, but he's taken it's a fair step up for him uh, to come from Highland League up to the, the the level of where we are in the championship. It's a massive step up. It's a massive step up. But when you're scoring goals for fun like he does. You've got that's letting you can you've got some kind of talent right. and I'm not so sure that Highland League one will be tough again it'll be you're playing against better players here but up there it's just as hard when they're you've got guys coming in about and sclaffing well, it and just as hard I think you'll, you'll have had more space is, is for me the, the biggest difference and if we have someone here that helps create the space I exactly. think that'll make a big difference exactly um, we're still creating chances so it's not huh? it's not all a loss really we're just not getting the breaks really at the moment I, uh, there is a lot of disgruntled fans out there on the, on the terraces. Let's uh, we'll, we'll come to that later. Aye, uh, <laughs> but you've got to tap the positives in every game, and, and we're doing that. Uh, and, and I think we're also another thing that I, I'm noticing in games, and I'm sure other people is there is players playing out of position That's into different areas, and although that's maybe no working. You can see how that might work at a certain time when it comes in, so not going to be too hard or not. Well, Dick's been forced to do that a bit. He's a bit short, we're a bit short handed at the moment. So, no strikers. No, he's got to juggle a wee bit, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Although Bobby Lynn's thinking he's a striker now. Hey! <laughs> Uh, Hamilton game, obviously, we had them uh, as well. Wasn't the greatest advert for, for for us, really, if I'm, if I'm honest on that one. I thought we were pretty poor against Hamilton, to, to be honest with you. Uh, sorry, guys, if you're listening, but I, I, I did the race brilliantly. We we've just fell away there. We couldn't we couldn't have done nothing. Uh, the goal, unfortunate. You get a handball penalty. Job done. You lose your you lose your main centre half, uh, and that again makes life uh, difficult for you. Uh, it's more than the centre half for me with him. Dick, Dick says it himself. If not the best player in the league, certainly one of them. But he's the captain as well. Uh, he's the boy I led you into that, JB, because I'm getting more professional now. With that, you kind of <laughs> I led you in there to let you show off your knowledge. Talisman, that's what he is. A what? Talisman. Is that the thing you wear in your neck? Exactly. <laughs> Oh well, I'd wear Tom O'Brien with my neck anyway. No, yes, he's, 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 a, he's a great, a great player, and sadly, again, he really missed uh, when he's no there. But again, you've got somebody like Ricky Little stepping up. Absolutely. And when I come on to Ricky Little, Ricky Little stepping up last night against Partick, he was immense. Yeah. I just thought he was superb. Yeah. 
How many games is that O'Brien out for now? This time is it two this time? That'll be another two. Uh, another two, uh. See, from your point of view, Derry, when things maybe haven't gone as well as we would have liked them in the park, what's the mood like back in the dressing room after a game or at half time in a game? Yeah, it's definitely tough. Um, so it's all about staying positive, like you said. Obviously, it's so early on right now as well. So obviously, the mindset of the lads is, you know, your, your fortunes can change pretty quick. You know, we win on Saturday. You know, things can start going in your favour a little bit more. But I think it's just... Obviously, a lot of these lads have a lot of experience and they know like there's going to be a lot of highs and a lot of lows. So I think they're good at like keeping everyone a little bit level-headed at the minute. So, yeah. Who's the guys in the changing room that does raise the spirits? Is there one or two characters there that sort of uh, just G everybody up? And... Yeah, who is it? Yeah, I'd say like, well, I see Craig's a lot. So like Craig's, is, I speak to him a lot. He's a bit of a character for me and stuff. So obviously he's a bit of a joker now and again, but... I'm still kind of fresh to the team, yeah. so I'm sort of like still trying to find so out work. who's who's who, what's yeah. what, even find my own place in the team sort of thing. So, but nah, yeah, the lads are all good though. Yeah. Bartek. Yeah. Uh, Cup game, I was less worried that I'd rather take three points on Saturday than I would have. If I had to take a win from one of them, it would be Saturday. But. Uh, I would love a win on Saturday, but I was kind of looking forward for a wee run in the Cup. I was hoping we'd do well last night. Uh, I think you and I spoke about it before. Partick was always going to be a top. It's, it's the one we didn't win. Again, two, two games in succession against Partick. A team who are looking to be really good. They give Inverness Carly an half a thumping. So we went doing there last night, probably be honest a wee bit hopeful again yeah. and, and the longer the game went on I mean I'm, I'm, I'm done I'm not going to speak about it too much but I thought the first half they were all over us how we didn't go in 3-0 doing it at half time I didn't again mm -hmm. uh, second half I thought we came out and we were a lot more positive a lot better uh, Abdul had their own views and what's doing but I, for me I thought we weren't uh, just perfect in midfield we were a lot of good ball players in midfield but perhaps weren't breaking up their play as much and I think that was forcing it. I thought they were they were coming in droves doing all the well been their right hand side. So Mason and, and Bobby had a had a, had a tough sh shift in the first half, uh, and they were Mason was getting dragged in because obviously uh, Ricky was busy in the middle and that. So they were very good at breaking yeah. moving players about. I thought, but they've got some talent here. Yeah, I know that and Dowst didn't oh. score. You know, he's a good player. How he didn't score I don't know. In fact, I think he cleared one off the line if I remember. <laughs> like, but I mean, good, good, good team. They've got depth. There's no reason why they can't be second in the league after us at the end of the season. They'll, they'll certainly be there. Aye, they're, 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 they're one of JB's, be one of the favourites. Yeah, it's one of your tips, isn't it? Yeah. I, I would say you're right there. That they're definitely going to be there or thereabouts. Uh, them or Dundee. I would say actually, and based on what we've played, <laughs> they're a better team. I thought they were better than Dundee. A lot of folk might disagree with me, but I thought they moved the bar about better than Dundee. Their goal was phenomenal. I mean, the, the boy was up, just up in the air, bang, job done. It was a great, great goal. How did Dem Allen get on? How did he fit in? I, I thought Scott Allen, again, is a great, great playmaker. Uh, he took a wee while to get into the game, I thought, but again, that was because his role. And, and well, again, what his role is and exactly how you would describe it but for me he's a playmaker right. and, a, and a passer and I thought that he would have struggled a wee, a wee bit of last night in the, in the role that he was doing he was kind of coming across we missed somebody like uh, Chris Hamilton uh, and there he's a great great player I I quite like James Gregan in that position to be mm -hmm. fair I, I think he's a quite good in that zone it, it's totally he gives a, a fair challenge and that in there and I thought Dale Hilson last night was tremendous uh, he really did work his socks off. Uh, there were some question marks over Alan's fitness. I think he's up to speed over a few more weeks. I think his brain, his brain mucks up for his fitness. Yeah, right. You can, if you've got a brain, a fit by brain like him, you don't hate to perhaps be the fittest player on in the yeah. park. And I'm sure fitness will come here, bro. That's near thing. But yeah. I'm sure there'll be an allowance made for him. Maybe no need to. There are, he's there on there to stop players coming there, he's there to create stuff. Yeah. So. One of the things I've noticed at the early days of Alan being on is 
and no disrespect to anybody because they probably haven't gelled yet, but he was seeing passes and making passes that maybe some of the players weren't seeing so aren't running onto them, but that's going to come on the training ground. Absolutely. They're, they're not used to that just yet. We, 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 have. we had the same when Paul Sheeran was in the go. Paul Sheeran used to ping that bad dude and think, that's a rubbish bar, but it just found it wasn't used to what it was going. So the players will get used to what Scott Allen sees and what they see, and they'll be showing them where he's going. And I mean, he didn't last night, he just switched it right yeah. over. Great bar. Yeah, the boy, young uh, Mason, can bring a bar down well. I mean, he can bring the bar down well and, and do it. So I thought he had a better, his second half, I thought he was pretty strong last night, actually. What would you say, like say, work-wise, we didn't, we couldn't get off in time to get to the game last night, it would be a midweek game, mm -hmm. so um, you're the, the sole reporter for, for that game. What would you say from an Arbroath growth point of view would be the biggest highlight for us? How we kept our heads up when we were getting pummeled. <laughs> I think, I yeah. think the team did, because the first half we were, we were getting pummeled, but I thought they stuck in well, I thought the players dug in, they never, they never put their heads down, I mean, that must be quite demoralising yeah. when you're, when you're getting up, yeah. and I mean, people might say, oh, we weren't a pummel, but in my opinion, we were played off the pitch in the first half, and we kept our head up, we went in at half time, lucky, nil nil, we came back out, uh, and it was slightly changed a wee bit, uh, and so I think for, for an Arbroath fan, I think we had, showed resolve, guts, determination, and still went to try and score. I mean, <clears throat> they'll run through there you can. There he's sitting next to me you can. He had one when the keeper, well, he tells me that the keeper parried it onto the board. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just hit the post. <laughs> See what he said, he might sound better. He said he back and his on so forth. <laughs> you came on roughly the last the last half hour, Derry. What's yeah, it yeah. like when you're sitting on the bench watching a game like that? Are you thinking, don't chuck me on, are you thinking, get me on there, or what, what's going through your mind? 100% get me on. Um, I think as a, a winger as well, you know, you want to get on, well, you want to be on to start with anyway. Of course. But then when you see the way the game's going, I think any player who's like likes to score goals or create chances, when the game's like that, you sort of think, oh, you know, might be able to add a little something, help the team out. I think, you know, like you said, the way the game was going was like, they had a lot of possession. But the second half, the game did start opening up a little bit more and there was chances to maybe like, you know, get at players. So no, 100%, I just wanted to get on and, you know, get a feel. Okay. And but speaking of highlights, who does your hair? It's not meant to be highlights, <laughs> to be honest. I was actually thinking about getting a haircut before you this. you done that yourself? No, 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 my mates back in America did it for me. But it was a seagull yeah, what, your, mate, your, your mates? <laughs> yeah, man. It was fully, hey, it was fully blonde at one point and now it's gone to highlights. <laughs> now you say that as well, like the Hamilton or something, they were saying he's got a bird shite on his head and I was like, it's got to go, I need to get rid. They just to put this one out after the curfew. It's what people will recognise you in the pitch now. I was going to get it it's trimmed off as well. But it's too bad I didn't know, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I, we, I was going to just, oh, I saw when, when you're sitting on the, the bench there and you're watching the game, yeah. are you focusing on any individual player, so for example you're a winger, are you focusing on that defender saying right, yeah. I need to come in inside or round it, is that the kind of thing you're thinking of or are you? Uh, yeah, last night I was, obviously Bobby was on the left wing and I knew I'd end, end up going left wing at some point and um, yeah, definitely looking at their fullback but also like watching Bobby as well, what he does, where he gets joy and stuff, I think you have to like, you can't be going on thinking, you know, I'm going to do the same things for every yeah, player. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. got different tendencies. Yeah. So, no, nah, I was looking at it a little bit, yeah. But I do the same move every time, so. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What's your signature move? <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we're recording here here tonight, the transfer window is going to be shut in. It's no secret that we're, you know, there's talk about bringing two or three players in as as we speak. Literally, don't know who they are, but it's going to be soon. Um, what would your wish list consist of, Fermer? Uh, Lewandowski. <laughs> oh, I, I just even meant position. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <would>, see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> I, I went a couple of strikers and uh, a midfielder that can break up play uh, 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 someone else that we can sl sit in there uh, and can help. I, I think that's what we're, we're uh, looking for. Like a ball winner right in the middle. A ball winner right in the middle. Like somebody that is, is, can take a challenge and make a challenge clean. <laughs> and uh, I think that would be a great benefit for us because I, I think 
the squad we've got is quite good to be fair and, and I'm quite impressed with a lot of little things I'm seeing uh, so that would be what I would be looking for uh, Anyone that played seemingly out of position that actually did particularly well in that position for you? Tama Brown was a good goalkeeper two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got guys that's it's playing out of position, but but no, I mean, Scotty Stewart uh, and uh, Jason Thompson, you can, they, they often soap about, you can, Jason right yeah. wing, but, and then last night he was kind of uh, in the inside a wee bit, uh, and, and vice versa. So they, they, they played well. I mean, there's no problem there. I, I don't think there was anybody really stood out. I, 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 I was impressed with Hilson's work rate, Dale Hilson's work rate, I thought he was good. Uh, Bobby and, and Mason in the first half were struggling the way that the players was coming against them, but whether they were spoken about. So again, they, 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 they did okay in the second half. So that would be my... And I've mentioned it before, but like Dick Campbell just seems to use his whole squad all the time mm -hmm. again, he uses other subs pretty much. So. Aye. you give it your all and it's not a big deal they just swap you out La so that's a, a big change for last year because last year we didn't yeah. use our subs so much uh, so I mean it's probably better if you're like a dairy I'll tell you if you're sitting on the bench I'm sure if you've no much chance of getting on it gets boring mm -hmm. but you're almost almost guaranteed a game now just now the way it's going with yeah, Dick yeah, selection yeah, definitely. and it's not like the last five minutes it seems to be you get a good chunk of game at impact yeah yeah so. It's the way it's it. about. I think it's good for pla for players to come on and like try and make an impact. So, like you said, I didn't obviously I didn't know too much about last year and the way they did it, but yeah, it seems like they they've been doing that sort of stuff. You know, bringing the lads on and fresh legs sort of thing. Yeah, I think that I think that'll be it. That'll, that'll tell throughout the season. Yeah. Is the is the team gels? Yeah, you can because there is new folk in there, so it's going to take a minute to gel. Yeah. And as fans, we're not going to be happy until it is gelled, but. I think when you see it, you, you then have become bad overnight. Yeah. With just no having the luck. Yeah. You just need a break, yeah. Aye. Uh, well, hopefully that comes on Saturday, the the, the, the next Partick Thistle game that we have. It's at home, so that, for me, makes a difference. I think it'll make a difference. And, uh, and I mean, their fans were behind them last night. You right. can, uh, they, were, they were good. We were quiet last night as, as fans. Uh, to be fair, but no, they're fine. So I think it'll be a different game here again. Uh, you get the Gayfield atmosphere, so hopefully that'll make a difference. See, for you as a as a player, no. especially at Gayfield, but you'll hear it in, in the other grounds and things like that. You will hear certain things being being shouted. If you do have disgruntled fans, no. what, what what impact does that have on you when you're out on the pitch? Because I want people to understand yeah. the, the effect that this can have on a team. You know, it's all right for them to go home and you know, shout and swear at the telly and, and all the rest of it, but they're, they're doing it, you know, on the pitch to you guys sometimes, you yeah. know, unfairly so, but... Well, it's maybe sometimes it's fair, you know, you can never say if it's fair or unfair, you know, if the team's playing poor, I think, you know, sometimes as a player, you can hear it, but then there's times where, like, you sort of phase everything out, so I, I guess it's in between for me, because when I'm playing, I don't really hear too much in terms of, like, you know what fans are saying is definitely not like the other fans maybe if you take a minute to like stand still but you're so concentrated on the game right that even if like that lapse of judgment to like listening you can get caught out of position or caught out but it obviously i haven't heard any overwhelming you know boos or anything but i imagine it would play an impact because as you know when things are in high spirits, how much that can help a team absolutely so it's more so just, just a, both ways, it's more just a it? vibe that you're getting isn't yeah, it yeah you positive negative yeah. Because obviously, when you know someone gives away a loose pass, obviously you hear the oh like yeah. that. So that obviously plays mm. an effect on your mind. But like you said, you know, if with the positive, you know, noise it helps even more, and you see that in any league, any team, fans behind you helps. How well have you settled into the town first of all before we start talking about the team and where you came from and all the rest yeah. of it? How's how's our both life for you? Yeah, it seems all right for me up to now. I haven't been doing too much. Obviously, I live with Dan, yeah. so we sort of just hang around with each other a lot and just chill. But I still need to, like, you know, get out a little bit more, maybe go see the beach and whatnot. But now I'm settling in well. Not been here too long, but I'm hoping, you know, it keeps going smoothly. Bobby Lynn's not dragged you to DeVito's yet, no? No, no, he hasn't. Some <laughs> strike. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. It's 
Let's let's talk about you then as, as a player. You've obviously came our both, and we'll get to how how all that happened. But we go way back. Um, obviously, you played as a kid, but you were in the the Man City team, weren't you? As, as a youth yeah, team. yeah. I was at Man City until I was uh, eighteen years old. I signed for them after I was with Chester, and then signed for them when I was like eleven or twelve, maybe. Yeah. And then spent about six or seven years with Man City. Yeah. Was that just was that schooling with Man City as well, or just the actual? Yeah. So. I think we were one of the first teams to do it for our age at the time, like back in the day it was quite a big deal. Um, when we got to like 12 or 13, they all took us out of our like public schools. And like, you know, I was from Chester, so I got took out of my school, lads from Liverpool or, you know, local schools in Manchester, we all got put into one school, like a private school in St. Bede's. Mm -hmm. And then I think from, even from when I am now, I think every lad, I think from year seven up is in that private school. So you will do pretty much half day school, half day football every day from the age of 12 up until 16 and you know you're getting private education as well so they, nice. they put a lot of money into you yeah wow so that was really how cool. many kids were speaking about in that system right now so i imagine how many on a team there's like 20 of us so from like year seven up to year 11 so it was like like four 24 60 80 keep going through oh, wow. like each year yeah it's a lot of food yeah yeah a lot of money as well yeah, yeah definitely no it was an investment for them. And do they, do they make targets, sorry, do, you, do, do they make targets of what you've got, what sort of level you've got to achieve in your grades? Yeah, yeah, they're bit, they were very big on it, to be fair. When I was doing it, we only were able to take uh, six GCSEs, so that made it a little bit easier to concentrate on, because we were doing just football, so I passed all mine, I got six Cs, if you're wondering. A bit more of us. That's his next question. Next question. <laughs> I mean, you let it go, yeah. <laughs> Good luck in that. What, what were they? Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> so I did business history and then obviously the standard maths, English, English lit, and science. Yeah, it was pretty. pretty Six seats, impressive. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> a very average in school. Guys <laughs> that have gone on to be big household names. Any of them that were yeah. in your sort of class? Yeah, yeah, we had. Um, well, there was a few lads, obviously year below year stuff. So obviously Phil Foden was in like uh -huh. the system and stuff, and obviously he was playing like two years up with us. And then obviously Tosin, who plays for Fulham now yeah. in the Prem, he was in that. And then a few other lads who were doing well for themselves. One of my close mates, Daniel Grimshaw, he plays for Blackpool in the Championship. So a lot of lads have gone on to have like really good careers yeah. for themselves. So yeah. Did Ford and just stand out a mile even yeah. at that age? I think even at that age when we were young, I think everyone was like, "This lad's gonna." This is the guy. Yeah, and you yeah. can also also sense it from the club. You know, like the club were pushing it as well. Yeah. So you're like. Yeah, this guy's gonna go on to like he was a, a madness. He was yeah. a favourite. Yeah. Imagine if he had some six Fs. Fooling the six Fs. You don't get a bit of care to you. There's exceptions made in every walk of life. So what from from the the Man City days? What how did that transpire from there to to moving over to the states? Yeah, so I was a very late developer, you know, up until seventeen, eighteen. Um, I just wasn't growing to put it bluntly it was just like so delayed compared to all my you know my teammates and stuff and it was getting to a point where i think even man city were getting a little bit impatient with you know the lack of like growth and development it wasn't even so much like your height but you know becoming a man you get, like, I, yeah, yeah. testosterone all that sort of stuff it was sort of that and like lads were surpassing me and it was becoming like harder for me on the pitch and then you know it's a longer story than this but you know, my dad, they sort of pulled me in and was like, you know, it's not going to work out, like, late developer. So I went to a few clubs on trial. They sort of was like, not willing to, like, you know, invest in a lad who's just not ready to start playing st straight away sort of thing. And my dad just said, well, they brought up the American option a few times to us along the journey at City, you know, from 15, 16, 17. And my dad was just big on it straight away. And he was just like, well, let's go down this route of, you know, America. <laughs> And they got behind it completely, Man City, and, you know, I'm really thankful to them. They put money towards me to do my SATs, which you have to pass to get to America and, like, put me in touch with numerous schools. So they were a big part in, like, helping me get out there. And then that sort of just opened the pathway for me. And I was like, I'm not going to lie, I was sort of against it because it was sort of back in, I say back then as if it was years ago, but there was sort of a stigma of, like, oh, if you go America, nah, you're done. Do you know what I mean? Like, your career is sort of, like, going to fizzle out well among, amongst the lads so I was like ah, so I want to keep playing in you know in England and then I went out and I'd say it's the best decision I made by far yeah I loved every minute of it yeah 
It's a fair thing you say, though, because it must be one of the few sports where going to America is seen as a bad thing. Yeah, because everybody right. else, yeah. if you're a pop star, you want to crack America. If you're <laughs> yeah, a boxer, yeah, yeah. you want to crack America. Right. Yeah, All right. these other areas want to crack America. Football, ah, yeah. You know, it's like the end of the career stuff. Yeah, I think it still has that sort of effect now. Like, you know, when you hear, you know, signings go to the MLS, yeah. people yeah. are like, oh, going for a holiday. It's a retirement fund day. Right. Yeah, so yeah. even now it's still got that that sort of like stigma around it but the league's obviously growing a lot yeah. you know you've got Gareth Bell who's just signed there and he's not exactly like at the end of his career I wouldn't say he's not at the end of his career but financially he does not has he not joined the, the live tour of golf no <laughs> I love a probably that as well <laughs> probably over. I mean how, when you were playing in America yeah uh, and you, you've played in both places now I mean it might be difficult to compare America to Scotland but how is the is the fans and, and how is the standard of the football out there now so compare championship yeah. to the level you were playing in America I say the standards are different yeah um, obviously I've only played three games now I've just mm-hmm. been trying to get um, up to fitness myself you know yeah. it's pre-season and stuff but my biggest telltale from the Scottish game to in America it's a lot faster you know, when I was in America, I felt like I could sort of like stand on the ball a little bit more, maybe, you know, play a few one twos and stuff. But my biggest notice from now is like, there's no time on the ball. And if you are, you're getting hit. <laughs> I, 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 I'm glad you said that because I watched a video of earlier on. Uh, I was supposed to be working, but I was watching Daniel's highlights. Research. And then Daniel's highlights, there is highlights. <laughs> and, and, and one of the things I, I, I saw you going through a couple of guys and you almost looked like you were walking past them because they, it looked like space and time you can I was thinking to myself oh, possibly I could have come back <laughs> <laughs> I could have bossed him but uh, no let, and it, it, it wasn't that bad like. <laughs> <laughs> but no it, it, it just looked different uh, no it is because it's I'm, 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 I'm certainly not going to slag it but when we were speaking the other week about women's football uh, I, I quite like watching the women's football but it's just if you get past the stage it's not so fast and brutal it's actually quite good to watch yeah. and I think that for me watching American football or soccer it would be cardio rare yeah. that's what I would describe but it Daniel as. said exactly the same thing in our last pod yeah. says that's what took him aback was the speed yeah, the yeah. time you don't go on the ball I think obviously a few factors are different in America like you know like the weather and stuff and there's a few like if you play on the west coast teams are a lot slower but then if you play on the east coast I'd say then the speed starts mm-hmm. to pick up a little bit more because of the climate but no, in general, what I've noticed, like lads are proper getting about in the Scottish league and like you know writing and stuff. So. Did you not get quite a, a, a tough introduction? You came on and did somebody not plow through you yeah. in about the first five I minutes? I think so. Yeah, I think it was one of my first few touches. And I thought, <laughs> I just seen you. I, I think I tried to go on a dribble. I thought, yeah, let me try and go on one of them dribbles. And then I went that small, and then the next one I got nailed, and I went. Ah, here we go. It's <laughs> <laughs> going to be a bit too. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> the, just with what you said about the physicality side of things uh, at Man yeah. City, how was that a factor at all in America, or did that not really come into it then because of the speed and things? Yeah, I think lads in America. I don't know if you like you watch the films and stuff, and they're all like in the gym and all that sort of jock sort mm-hmm. of stuff, and that is literally how they are. Um, when I was in university, it sort of cringed me out a little bit. Um, like when we were all in the gym, like we were doing like 6 a.m. lifts and stuff, and all of a sudden everyone were like crowd around your bench press, and the next minute everyone's like screaming, like, Let's go! All that sort of stuff. <laughs> it took me a minute, but I was like, oh, I can't get on board with this. Like everyone's screaming, but that's how they are. They're so like, you know, like team morale and that yeah. sort of stuff, but it's just the way they were. But to go back on your question, it, it is a physical game yeah, over there, yeah. but I think it's a different type of physicality. Like theirs is more. Well, I can't compare the both, but I feel like in Scotland it's more tackles, whereas like in America I don't feel like lads were flying in with tackles, so okay. refs are a little bit more like that's a red card, yellow card. But in terms of like body contact and stuff, obviously you've got some big lads over there, yeah. So it's not easy when it comes to that. But the tackles are a lot tougher here. Did you do a Joey Barton and start talking in their accent? <laughs> no, but I think uh, I think my mum was picking up on me saying I started putting on like a Scottish twang at one point. I was like, eh. Oh, <laughs> 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 I was like, no chance, man. But uh, what would be wrong me, with Scottish twang? No, nah, I mean, my granddad's Scottish, so he'd probably <laughs> like it. <laughs> but uh, American, I think nah, for me, mum and that maybe would say, me nan actually would say I'd say a few words. 
yeah. when they'd come back and pick up on yeah, yeah. taking out the trash yeah the, <laughs> yeah that sort of stuff yeah, yeah, though yeah. how are you doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my sister started doing it she was there about a week next thing she's talking about diapers and trash and all sorts yeah, of things yeah yeah uh, I definitely started picking up on a few words yeah so you could play for Scotland then through your granddad? I had uh, I went to a few Scotland training camps when I was younger, when I was like 14, 15, 16, 17? Nah, maybe up until 16s I was in all them sort of camps and stuff and went up, so yeah, I was in and amongst it with them lads. And uh, I think one of the lads I still have on my like, so Ross McCorvey plays for Aberdeen. All right, yeah. Yeah, he was when I was doing the camps as well, so yeah, it was good. So put you in the sport of England and Scotland, I ask you, who are you playing for? I think I'm good enough, any. <laughs> <laughs> that was the other question, uh, which uh, <laughs> I, leave, I leave it open. <laughs> so many different teams were you with then, while you were over in the States? Because you, you went to yeah. New York, and then you were somewhere else. Yeah. I was with, so, in America, when you're with um, your university, Obviously, the seasons are weird there. They call it the fall season. So you play until August till November, December in your college season. And then you have the spring off, which is basically just gym work in the school with your team and stuff and mm -hmm. concentrate on your studies. And then they do a summer league, which is classed as the fourth division. So then um, I played for a few teams in like the, the semi-pro leagues, uh, fourth divisions. And then after that, I got drafted to New York Red Bulls. Then I signed for Tucson after that, and I was with Tucson for two years. So professionally, I was with Red Bulls and FC Tucson. Yeah, the Red Bulls is that because of the Man City connection or no? Because no, no, New York Red Bull are tied in with Man City. New York City FC. Oh, is it? Yeah, New York Red Bulls. No, oh, that was right. just uh, just what happened. I had a good few seasons in college, and you know, and then you go through the draft. I'm sure you're aware of the system, how they do it. Like not know, so much in foot, an American football. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's it's pretty, pretty similar. Explain yeah, a little yeah. bit about that then. So obviously, I'd rather speak about spring break. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pronounced spring break. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's literally like the same way. You know, you, you do really well in college, and then you know teams are watching you, and then I think you have to have like two or three teams in the MLS who have to be interested in you to be eligible for the draft. Okay. Okay. So then a pool of like eighty players are in this list. And then I think 60 players get selected or some, something like that. So then, you know, 60 teams are picking you from the draft sort of uh -huh. thing. So, yeah, it was good. And then I went second round to the Red Bulls, yeah, which was good. It was obviously a proud moment for me and my family. It was like, oh, God, yeah. it was massive, like, uh, mm. work hard to get through that four years of college. And then, yeah, but I didn't graduate in the end. So, but I got that. But so you moved to that. New York. Yeah, I moved to New York. What yeah. did you think of that? Yeah, it was class. Right. Yeah, it was class. I loved it. On and off the pitch, if that's right. what you were wondering. He's got the big and the bad one. He's absolutely got him. He's so stupid. <laughs> I, that was good. It's, it's a good. Well, I, I've been lucky enough to be there on holiday once in a while. It's a brilliant place, like. New York. Oh, I just loved yeah. it. It's, uh, no, it was good. It was good. I loved it. And then. So when you finished over there, how, how did you get involved with your growth? Because that's what the listeners is wanting to care. Yeah. Has that pinched your question? Not at all. You crack on. I was going to ask about the, because you got MVP one year, one yeah, season, did you know? 2019. Yeah, yeah, 2019 in the Ocean City, yeah. Did well that year. Who, but as Farmer says, how did you come up? I mean, who makes that phone call? What, is it done through agents? Is, yeah, I'm yeah. not imagining that Dick or Pink just phone up. No. Um, I was... One of my teammates actually, uh, Charlie Machel, who's from Newcastle, probably ended up watching this. Um, we would hey, obviously, yeah. I was just playing with him for FC Tucson, and you know, I was speaking to him, and he was he's played in Asia and played in Denmark and all these sort of places. And I, was, I think I was starting to get like bored of America in a way. Really? Yeah, like off the pitch and on the pitch, I was enjoying it, but I sort of wanted to like, I was twenty four, sort of wanted to test myself and come back to the UK and. You know, start. I say it like my mates laugh and stuff. Start playing proper football, sort of things. You know what I mean? With relegation, promotion, yeah. something to play for. That much sense. You're trying to yeah. better yourself. Yeah, better myself. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I was talking to him, and then he was on the phone with uh, Jim Carlin, and um, he's from Scotland, and uh, he sort of just on the phone and got Pink to then call me, and then Pink was just calling me now and again, and was sort of like telling me, "Come over, come over." Then all of a sudden, he was like, "There's a game against Fylde." I was like, oh, I'm still sorting out things with my club in America because I was like, oh, I want to leave and I want to go to a club. So I was like, you know what? 
I'll come, I'll come play in the game and see how it goes. And then I saw how it happened. It's you know a few people connected, got me in touch with Pink, and then yeah. Had you heard of our growth prior to this, or? I'd heard a little bit about the season they had, you know, yeah. obviously with how well they did. So when my mate told me about it, I started doing my research a little bit more, and I was like, "Wow, what a season they had!" And I was like, "What an up and like teams obviously flying." I was like, "Good place for me to start and kick on." And you know what I mean, in yeah. the Scottish Championship, yeah, no, which is a true. really, yeah. really good league as well. So I was like, "Yeah, it's tough league, I, yeah. I like a bit of that." We had quite a bit of hassle getting the, the visa. I don't know how much of this you know, yeah. but um, what's yeah. that like? From your point of view, going, oh, it's not done yet, it's not done yet, it's not done yet, because yeah. it took a while to get that visa yeah. sorted. Yeah, you're sort of just waiting around, twiddling your thumbs a little bit, and you don't really know what's stopping it, which is a bit of an annoying thing. And you start thinking, oh, is it them in, the, in America? Is it my manager playing, my old <laughs> manager? Oh. Sort of doing me. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I was sort of just waiting around, and I thought, oh, how long is this going to take but you know here's what it is at the so end you still day. had to get a work visa for the UK yeah I think it was clearance even though you got a British passport on. I think it was more international clearance I think when you've played in say if you've played in any foreign league internationally then you have to get like that clearance from their no. FA or oh, something right. so I think that was the problem so obviously someone was just being lazy <laughs> <laughs> and what's it like um, living with Dan then what, what is it you get up to all that you know you can't play football all day so what is it what's the, what's the standard day look like for you guys at the moment see it's not very um, entertaining to be honest <laughs> if we're not if we're not like doing extra sessions like you've seen on the field and stuff we're sort of just lounging around in all honesty uh, just watching Netflix or just watching shows. We sort of barely even see each other now and again. Could go a whole day without seeing Dan. Really? Likewise, yeah, easily. <laughs> sort of just go up to our own things. Oh, but who's she in the middle of It's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> who's allowed to uh, snore her? Snore her? would probably have to be Dan. I don't think I'm much of a snore myself. <laughs> how, how can you ask that question? <laughs> Does he lie in the bed listening to himself snoring? <laughs> Listen, you sometimes what? hear them. You're supposed to be a professional, mate. But they're lying <laughs> next to each other, though. Sometimes you never, you never heard somebody snore um, in another room. I, but I've never heard myself snore. What's he going to say? <laughs> I am allowed to snore. <laughs> I understand what it meant. You're some snoring. <laughs> That's how it works. And we are ever room sharing, I'm going to tell you if you're a loud snorer and somebody will interview you one day and you'll go Let me tell you, if I'm room sharing with you, I'll not be sleeping so you'll know you're room sharing Hi, hi, hi Oh, family show Easy tiger <laughs> <laughs> Moving on <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that Dan did say about you okay. uh, to us He said, you will never in a million years out sing him and oh. then he did a sublime version of Bill Withers for us. We want to know if you want to rise to that challenge. Yeah, obviously I'll give it a go, you know, sort of thing. What are you thinking? What have you got? What's up your sleeve? I might go for the same song as I did uh, from Initiation. All right. A little acapella, but I don't know if you will know it. All uh, right. Mario, Let Me Love You. <laughs> you ever heard that? No. <laughs> Depends who you sing it. <laughs> give it a go. Do I just jump in? Anytime you like. Do you, you need, need any backing like? music? No, no. No, I'm just trying to go for it. <laughs> it's, oh, tough you, to it's tough gig, mate. We're, you're no one here for your looks. I, oh, <laughs> I'm just look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see my phone. I've got the Don't be a song, uh, God. Uh, uh, <laughs> downhill from here, man. Right? Yeah. Baby, I just don't get it. You enjoy being hurt. I know you smell the perfume, the makeup on his shirt. You don't believe his stories. You know that they're all lies. Bad as you are, you stick around, and I just don't know why. If I was your man, baby, you never worry about what I do. That's it. What a smoothie! Oh, wow. right, who were you thinking about when you were singing that? Day? Can't say. Brings a bang to say he's a leader in a clubhouse. That's oh, a, bit a, bit a bit smooth. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a bit smooth. I mean, Daniel had music. Oh, it's a thing to cop out that. Oh, no, well. He was trying to drown himself out, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. I don't know. I think you do not allow someone to, like, you know. You do look, though. I mean, you're sitting next to me. You look like a member of a boy band with that hair. 
bit of a spice boy. Do eh? <laughs> you? We, we, we all know it's the initiation type thing that, that they do at the club there. How does that? Do you have to stand in the middle of everybody, or are you just sitting down, or what? what yeah, it was. How does uh, it all come about? Who goes right? You go now. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of that's how it is. They tell you, they tell you beforehand as well, and I'm not gonna lie, you sort of are, you know, shitting it a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're thinking about what song you're gonna do, and you think, oh, am I just gonna like be awful? Are the lads gonna get involved? You're hoping the lads start singing yeah, with yeah. you. Hoping they've heard it, unlike us. Yeah, they have <laughs> heard it as well, so they killed me as well. So I was like, oh, I was sort of went down as well like that when I did it. But um, it was a way, I think it was a way to air. And obviously it was oh. a pre-match meal and then all of a sudden, you know it's going to happen and you're hoping someone might forget about yeah, it and you yeah. get away with it. And then someone just goes, ding, ding, ding. Oh, oh you go, here we go. By one and then, you know, we've even got the managers in there when we did it as well. So that was, <laughs> it's good. It gets, good. You, gets, you, gets you settled in, doesn't it? So it was a good laugh. I'm not getting back to doing the barrier. Not doesn't it? Because you you, you can yourself when you're with your best pals and that you can you've got no barriers and you'll make a fool of yourself yeah. and, and, and I think that's a great thing I like yeah. that it's handy if you've got a voice like yours as well mate I wouldn't say it was good so <laughs> I don't know where you got that many of the other guys have you heard? I heard obviously I've heard Dan heard Shanks heard Mace then Keegs did it as well oh, yeah, okay. so yeah Shanks wasn't great <laughs> you got I think he was a bit nervous. I think he don't mind me saying that, but yeah. I no, think but when he comes on, it, you got me. Yeah. I'm looking for it, and oh, he's he bound to hear two for accent. I don't think he would do it. No, <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Is this a, is this an exclusive? Are you are you saying Shanks will bottle it? I reckon so. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I'm saying he went. I reckon Shanks will do it because he's we'll never been. He's we'll throwing down the challenge, isn't he? Uh, yeah, there we go. You're you you getting your mate and bother here. He's called him out. He's called him out. He's no prisoner. Nothing specifically to do with you this question, but one of the things I've been watching football recently, and I don't know why it's never occurred to me before, and I don't know if you're able to explain the answer to me or not. Anytime you see a guy taking a corner, regardless of what league it is or anything like that, you, the, the guy that's waiting to cross it in, puts his hand up in the air like that. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Normally you have a few signals, don't you, that the manager... But they all just seem that. to do that. I'm looking at their hands going, he's not doing this, he's not making any gestures, he just seems to be hand in the air. It's the same set piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same, same, same guy. Just just honestly, honestly, I, I just think, just whip it in. I don't think some lads... Yeah, even but maybe that's what I mean. It's I'm not whipping this in. I reckon most of the time it's just, all right, I'm about to take it. Maybe it's just that sort of thing. <laughs> don't talk about codes or anything like that. Nah, I've, I've been on teams where, you know, managers will do, you know, hands on the hips... Um, one arm, two arm, but Jump been, to the right. But I've been teams. I've been on teams where the, the ball just keep <laughs> the ball just keeps going back post anyway. So I just don't seem uh, seem no, to bother. Because well, that's I'm looking at it and going. It's not doing any yeah. difference. It's not like you're going. Oh, I'm going to pick out. Yeah. That means you're number three. Step up. That's what it's meant. It's like sort yeah. of meant to be, but it all depends on the delivery. So you've been fortunate enough with Dan. Maybe not this week because he's away. Farmer, I know you like to call him Hospital Kev, but Hospital Kev's away this week, so you've not had the extra training probably that you no, no, and Dan no. have been getting. What specific sort of things have you been working on? Because, yeah. um, like I say, you are fortunate enough to live in Arbro, so you get that yeah. little bit extra. Yeah. Um, what, I, mean, I was down, I was lucky enough to see you with the little nets, mm -hmm. and there was very few you missed, you were banging them in left, yeah, right, yeah. and centre. But uh, what sort of things have you been working on lately? Yeah, lately it's been a lot of the sort of technical stuff, you know just getting getting the touch back just going through like cobweb sort of thing and then it's a lot of finishing which i like so at the minute we've just been doing a lot of shooting drills and just competing against each other me and dan and then i think we do that on a thursday and i think tuesdays we're going to start doing fitness sort of thing with him so still similar he's going to put on the sesh but i think beforehand on the tuesday he's he does a like a sesh yeah. <laughs> as long as somebody else is paying <laughs> So yeah, so that sort of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hard on them. I'm sorry. I do <laughs> like it's it. It's a big old sin. It's clapped him again. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I want to. Uh, yeah, well, if you want to, say, he, he asked. I was saying this. He yeah. asked. Could Dan say, "Oh, yeah, it was really good, but Ken and all those that." He then sent us a message going, "Could you clip that bit from the just that bit? Yeah, it's just somebody saying nice things about him." No, I thought it was awful. Yeah, that's <laughs> Ken will send you that one. <laughs> I actually just want one thing, I want to give a little shout out to somebody, um, Jackson Smith, 
The, apparently he's really enjoying the podcast, but the other big thing I want to give him a shout out for is, we all know him, you'll probably not know him Derry, but uh, we, we know he's, his father, and his father's over on the dark side at the moment, over the, the Tangerine team. Ah, uh, yeah. He's even tried to convert him, and Jax is like, no, no, I'm on both. So, uh, Jackson, welcome aboard, stay with us, and uh, I believe you did a little bit extra work on the treadmill this minute was... Uh, last week there, Apparently and it was, that's true as well. And it was good to see you in the bus last night, Jackson, as well. Yeah. So it's uh, you and struggling at his job at uh, Donadice because he can't. Get, you, Jackson went again and gave advice. It's all the reason he survives. <laughs> Sorry, you. <Ewan. laughs> he's, he's, he's not really. He's I'm never. totally joking. He's not struggling at his job. He never is. <laughs> One of the biggest characters in the dressing room has got to be Bobby Lynn. Mm-hmm. We've got his testimonial coming up in October. Farmer, are you any hot news off the press about that? Uh, yeah, so we've been speaking to a couple of players. I, I think I said last week I would drop some names in, so I can't remember if I said, but the team, the Arbroath Select team, is going to be managed by uh, Stuart Petrie. Right. And a couple of names that's returning. Paul Sheeran has said he's going to be playing. It's a definite now. And Paul Sheeran is a definite. That's his hero. Oh, Paul Sheeran, great player. Yeah. Uh, oh, I tell you, it's, uh, for me, he's the best player that's ever played for our broth. Uh, for me. I, I, I'm torn between Paul Sheeran and Nicky Lowe and Bobby Lynn and <laughs> Josh Falconham and <laughs> Derek Orr. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, so Paul Sheeran, uh, Stuart Petty being the manager, and I, he has said he is coming back to play. <laughs> uh, there has been a couple of pull outs because their clubs want to let them play on the Sunday Which now understand. you can understand that totally but Mr uh, Nublé tells me he's coming back to play yeah. yeah. so I'm really looking forward to that we'll, we'll drop some mayor names in uh, there's close. another another lad that's playing uh, you'll maybe remember him Jonathan Smart that's uh, Bobby's best pal I think he drives a bin lorry now so, uh, is that a promotion? <laughs> I don't think it was a promotion I don't like but he's going to be playing uh, I'm trying to think of the, some of the other big names that's coming coming in there's a lot of ex Arbroath players that played in the, in the big games coming back uh, Stevie Doris is coming right. back uh, the goalkeeper tremendous I'm really looking forward to getting him back Darren Jimison oh. DJ's coming back to be the goalie yeah, well, I'm going up for big names Absolutely. Uh, I, I think it the reason I'm wanting that I'll, I'm never it's part of my rant but I'm going to do I just mosey on in here from you my can part mosey on in if you so, want there away. people about the tickets first of all well if I'm a lot of DI oh, right, so, okay. so we've, we've made it it's £10 a ticket for uh, 18 and over under 18s or sorry 18s and under it's £5 uh, it'll be at 2 o'clock on the 2nd of October that's a Sunday hopefully we'll get a good day uh, and the other thing that I'm wanting to advertise on here uh, Bobby, part of Bobby's vision that he wanted was, was Abdi involved the Hale family so we're going to do it like the international we're going to uh, well we're not singing the national anthem no that came maybe well oh, yeah. But we're going to have kids coming out with the players, Ken, so All right. if you've got your kids, any of your kids that's wanting to, any of you out there with your kids, you want to come out with a player, uh, I can't guarantee which player they'll come out with, but get in touch with me uh, uh, through the Bobby Lynn testimonial, or if you've got my number, send me a message, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, uh, and let us know and we can get that organised for you. Hopefully there'll be a wee bit of Hopefully there'll be a wee bit of uh, hospitality. We're looking in at that just now as well. Uh, Kev will be there. Kev will be bound to be. Bound to be. Uh, and just the game, two o'clock kickoff, and, and then the kids will get a game at half time. So lots of fun at half time rather than just sneaking away for a pie. We're going to be doing that. So that's kind of what we're on. Really, really love to see us doing there and, and give a little bit of support to, to Bobby. I mean, he's a great. Uh, great ambassador ambassador for the club he's been great servant for the club 10 years so it'd be great to see you down there uh, and as I say if you feel it get in touch with me no problem guys the least he deserves you'll be down here for the Cove game on the Saturday oh, no we're away we're away we're, we're up Cove. at Cove because mine it's a bit That's of a problem it, I tell you, it's bad planning as we've said before hospitality at Cove 
doing here for the Bobby Lynn testimonial the next day. Yeah, Derry, he's going to turn up. He's going to be there. You yeah. in the team, or are you just coming on the party bus with us? I guess I'm just coming now. Uh, well, actually, what I was going to say, <laughs> I, I, I don't care. It's an Arbroath yeah. team, so yeah, I know they privy who Dick and Pink's picking, but it's an Arbroath team. It's playing a Bobby Select. Right, so right, right, okay. So <laughs> there's a small problem with the Select team. Like we've not got enough centre halves. <laughs> Or sweepers, so there's a fair chance we'll have to get somebody decent on there. Like, well, again, again, you're looking at me, but I don't think I should. Oh, GB, remember? Uh, he was training with Daniel, remember? Center half, touch of an angel. Twinkle toes, remember? Oh, I thought he was the other half. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, anyway. Good. Any sort of entertainment pre post match, or is it mostly focusing on the game? What are you thinking, like we're going to take that or somebody like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Bobby's testimonial, I'm expecting you to go big and go home. <laughs> well, maybe, man, it's something like I, oh, I see what you're wanting, like uh, I don't know, can you never. I have actually got something up my, in my head. All oh, right, okay. But I was hoping you wasn't going to ask me that. <laughs> we do our research. I, I, I have got something in my head, but I can't, I've done a can. Right, but so we'll see. Secret, that'll come out in another pod. Uh, yeah, that might before, be. Before uh, yeah, yeah, so. Wouldn't be a podcast without a rant from you. Have you got anything for us this week? I am fed up with these bum pots and social media again. I really am. They, I mean, what are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> they're, they're irritating me. So, do with them. It's to be with the football club and the testimonial. Right. And what is it we found? They see somebody put something on social media, i.e. Bobby Lynn testimonial. And then they come up. Oh. What's the matter? He deserves a big game. And our bro select what you want to be. Oh, oh that. and that, that just bails my piss. What? I mean, sorry, sorry, family show. <laughs> <laughs> it just does. I mean, fair enough. What? I mean, I'm about to say kettle. <laughs> bails my kettle. The, why do people not take a minute to appreciate this in life in general? Fight are too quick to just gang on attack and slate things. Oh, Talk right. a minute and just let's see things what's coming on. It's uh, the, the hurting people that gives a lot of time, free time. There's a great committee we've got for Bobby Lynn, and Bobby himself wanted this type of thing. So they're getting on it. And then just when I'm on it, I think it'd be so. A second run? Oh, well, it's just all linked together. Yeah. Isn't the boy, I got. I can't mind his name, it's in, he's got it up in black and white. I mean, if you're going to be an idiot in Facebook, at least change your name. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I, I can't mind what he's asked said, but it's a disgrace and our bros have been utter rubbish and should be sorted out. Enough is enough. I'm not going back in Saturday, the boy said. Uh, because, I mean, what does he expect? Even Brazil, even Man City had a bad go sometimes. But four games into the season. Aye, and the boy said, I'm no going back because it's a joke. And then there was another, you know, I'll tell you, you've got my start then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, all, it's all Facebook boys. These boys that they post stuff on Facebook. Man, it's keyboard, keyboard warriors. And, and you read it, and it really does give you a wee laugh. I'm not going to say anything about the last team because I'm still laughing about it. Like, you Come can't, on, you oh, can't, no, I mean, didn't leave us hanging. Bentley Big Bollocks was... was oh, there we go again. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you give it. It's my rant, I'm allowed to hear my rant. Absolutely. And, I, and that's what my rant is this week. And I promise you, next rant will be nothing to do with that kind of stuff. No, I agree with you, mate. But it's not just football, it's the whole society. But it yeah, is. I totally agree it, with it, you. it absolutely is. I mean, uh, the Courier, I dick any of you, the Courier uh, report on Facebook, that's the worst thing out for it. Like, they just found just going on and slate it. Slate what's happening again. Pay attention. Yeah. I think, for me, one of the, the things the club's try to promote for, for a while now, but in particular over the last season or so, is togetherness. Aye. And that doesn't strike me as, as being together. We need the fans to come together as well as the, the team and the players and all the rest of it. So if you are listening out there, you know, but bear, we're four games in. We need a bit of togetherness yeah. on the pitch, off the pitch. We touched on it earlier. Yeah. It's, the, it's the positive vibe, isn't it? Yeah. It goes right through. You're allowed to get an opinion. I mean, I don't agree with hanging against one of the club in the pitch. I mean, nobody does. What's going on? That's what life's about. But uh, you, you've got to... Look at the positives a lot more than the negatives now in life. I mean, we've all got jobs that we're doing it. It's tough. I mean, Derry's there. Uh, and like last night, he, he almost scored and he didn't. 
but you didn't go over the negative saying I didn't score. Mm-hmm. What you, you took the positive out of that and said, Christ, I was bloody unlucky there, yeah, I was, yeah, I was close. Save, like, yeah. Get if I didn't mean for that keeper's hand and put it. No, but you came up, I mean, I want to step forward. And part of the thing that we, we went to do here is, is just, I mean, I know, and I can cover things that folks know happy about and more than happy to, to bring that up, but let's do it in a sensible way. Yeah. You can, and I, and I think that's it. I mean, I, I constructive criticism. That's the word we're looking for. Well, that's two words, but never mind. Oh, you're getting a bit pedantic. <laughs> <isn't you? laughs> that's one word. <laughs> <laughs> well, what just you were talking about positive vibes all over. One of the positive things that you're actually doing, Derry, is uh, I believe you're going to be helping out with the community trust. Yeah, yeah. Doing some of the coaching yeah, and things yeah, like that for the kids. Me and Dan, yeah. How does how how do they get involved in that? How's that all going to look? Yeah, I believe. Um, sort of like Tuesday, Thursday night, I think, if we're not training and stuff, me and Dan, I'm just gonna go get involved, and hopefully coach, coach the kids and sort of all that sort of stuff, show our faces, and you know, looking forward to doing that as well. You know, it's something um, I enjoy. I did a lot of coaching in America as well, so yeah, it's something okay. I'm actually like quite passionate about, do you know what I mean? So it's good. I hope she has great game back to the community. Absolutely. That community trust one of the best things. I know it's 47 season tickets. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've done, we're done well this year, so um, yeah, through, through the Community Trust we've managed to get uh, 47 t- tickets out through sponsorship and businesses, right, that's good. and I think, <clears throat> again, for, for me, a lot of people, and I know I've been quite involved in, 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 in helping get it going, but uh, not the whole Community Trust, just the season ticket part, but um, a lot of people, when you speak to them, and some will say yeah, and some will say no, it's not for me, and some will go, oh yeah, I want to do it, and they want their, their picture on social media, yeah. When you actually see what it means to the families that are getting these tickets, it changes everything. Um, uh, we've had mums or dads come up to us and go, you've no idea what, you know, I'm not saying any names, but what little Johnny, you know, what his reaction was when we gave him his season ticket. Some of them are crying, some of them are jumping up and down on their beds because they wouldn't have otherwise got to these games. It, I'm not going to go as far as to say it changes people's lives, but it changes it for that moment. Some of it does change people's lives because that again leads them leads them into being part of something. Absolutely. And, and and that's a big thing in your life. I mean, I was lucky. I grew up in a, a small village and we can't have that kind of We become that community. We're we're pals now. There's a lot of these guys in big cities or big towns as our brothers. In case somebody picks them up for no being a big city, was once a royal borough. Thought to be fair. Uh, it, but folk. They, they get into like, this thing like the community trust and then it becomes part of them they come to the fit when they meet stuff yeah. meet people are my pals now I can or both it's mostly through the fit uh, and then you got one call and obviously I met up at the work yeah, yeah. but we come to the fit so I think it's a great thing and I think that I would encourage folk if you can at all help with these things uh, absolutely I've seen it first hand the difference that it makes I, I can only applaud everything that the community trust do and then for guys like yourself, Derek, you come up and, and help out. And I think something we forget, you know, we're, we're a bit older guys, we're a different vintage, but these little kids, you're their heroes. Mm-hmm. And to get that close yeah. to your hero at that yeah. age yeah. is absolutely incredible. Oh, no, I think so. I think so. I think that's a big thing. But getting them that did it to, I think I, we get a sense of pride when you look at the picture. And it's a picture of Bobby or Daniel or Derek or whoever it is. Yeah. We, yeah, I think it's great. The kids will be trying to copy you and trying to hit the post at oh, the time. Tell me they're no wet in his hair like that. Okay, <laughs> 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 it's not going to be regular <laughs> shorts, it's going to be regular <laughs> hair. Right, okay, I think that I'm watching him. Next time you see him, he's it's gone. <laughs> can, can you imagine you're going to your bear to the lefty barbers? I went to Derry Kofu. <laughs> <laughs> can I get a seagull shit here? <laughs> Wow, I'm just glad. I'm just glad most of the money old enough to grow beards. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. get a dairy cool movie. Uh, no, coming on again. <laughs> oh, hey, from other teams and things like that. A lot, you know, you've got like Bobby Lynn f- famously got his son Bobby. Bobby Lynn. Um, is there a, a chant that you've had in, in previous teams or things like that? Because I've yeah. not heard one on the terraces for you yet. But no, there, was one, there was one in America, but. Oh, here's the opportunity. I'm not sure what you even want to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're totally right, you're totally right. Did you like it? It was alright. Go on, was, uh, Do you know the song Baby Shark? Alright. So yeah. Oh, I'll edit that out. 
told you they were there. That's going to go down a storm in the fun zone. Oh, oh mate. We, we can come up with something better than that later. Well, I'm hoping yeah. to because I, I want something else. We can't yeah. have that. If there's a song that sticks in your head, it's that either. Yeah. You could have picked anything. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. But yeah, they'd sing, yeah. Can we pick up a song by the Bleach Boys? Oh, oh JB, come boys. on. Oh, mate. But look, that mix in, because I think we're going to watch something for the Bleachers. Oh, what's happening? <laughs> Jesus. Almost done. <laughs> yeah, actually, are almost done. <laughs> yeah. um, most of the time, uh, every player does an encore. So um, I don't know what you've got for your second song. No. Joke. <laughs> it's extra, that. It's extra. No, um, farmer. Anything else from you? No, I've got nothing. I'm just going to say, I really enjoy Derry being on. I really have, and I think, it's, as I said, we said before, when they had the big start, folk get to meet the player uh, and hear a bit about him. Uh, and I've really enjoyed your company, Derry. You've been. You've been good thing, and I'll do my best to make sure that nobody ever sings that song. Oh, <laughs> and we can't promise we'll do our best. And don't wear pink boots. Oh. <laughs> I wear black boots somewhere. What's your favourite? Pretty much. Favorite? Nice. Jimmy, you anything left from you? All good, buddy, all good. In that case, just Derry, thank you so much. I'm sure the fans will enjoy hearing you as much as, as we have tonight. And singing that song. Absolutely. Good night. God bless. We'll see you on Saturday. See you later, guys.